And we want to stop the crime, Mr. Speaker. After eight years of this Prime Minister, Canadians are less safe. In fact, many areas in Canada are experiencing a dramatic spike in violent crime that we haven't seen in decades, hitting, hitting all-time highs in many areas and for many different types of crime. Now, crime, like inflation, doesn't just happen. It's not like the weather. It's not like you can read the Farmer's Almanac one year and say, OK, well, we're probably going to have an early frost and inflation might hit 3.5%. Nope. Inflation and crime are directly linked to this government's policy decisions. During the previous Conservative government, we brought in tougher penalties for dangerous and repeat offenders. And we're not talking about your, your, your young person making a mistake for the first time in their lives. We're talking about hardened criminals, people who use dangerous weapons to commit their crimes, people who commit the same crime over and over again, or people who cause grave bodily harm or even death in the commission of their crimes. We toughen those penalties. What did this Liberal government do? What did this Liberal Prime Minister do early on in his mandate? He started repealing those common sense conservative tough on crime bills and he made bail much easier to get. So it used to be in this country, if you had prior convictions, if you had proven to society in the courts that you were a dangerous offender, that if you're accused of committing a new crime, it would be harder to get bail. In other words, harder to be released before your trial. This Prime Minister, his ideological obsession with putting the rights of criminals ahead of the rights of law-abiding Canadians, decided to make bail easier to get. He actually mandated judges to err on the side of granting bail, even for those dangerous and repeat offenders. And again, we're not talking about uh, a young offender picked up for the first time for shoplifting, or someone who's lost their temper for the first time and, and, and maybe lashed out at someone uh, in a restaurant or in a park. We're talking about people who commit the same crime over and over and over again. And this government decided to put them back on the streets as early as possible. Well, no surprise, Mr. Speaker, crime started ticking up, and now we are in the midst of a crime wave that we haven't seen in over a generation. And it's all directly linked to this government's agenda. We've proposed a common sense approach to tackle car thefts. Our leader announced a signature policy to deal with this scourge that is now plaguing Canadians from coast to coast. It's becoming one of Canada's fastest growing exports, stolen cars. After this Liberal government weakened penalties and made it easier to get bail. They also diverted much needed resources from frontline border service agents who have the responsibility to inspect and track things leaving the country, and they spent it on the Arrive scam, an app that should have cost $80,000 ballooned to over $60 million because of phony invoices and work that was never done and all kinds of corruption that we're uncovering. They paid billions to consultants instead of investing in the frontline resources that would actually bring that crime. Yet we offered we, we, to, to fast track that bill too. We could have easily gotten those types of things passed. But instead what the government is doing is doubling down on their failed agenda and using the coalition that they have with the NDP to ram the, their more of the same agenda, the very same policies, the very same ideology that caused the cost of living crisis. It's caused the inflation. It's caused the massive interest rate hikes. That's caused the crime wave that's plaguing our cities. And that has caused the housing shortage that has driven the dream of home ownership out of the reach of so many Canadians. They want to double and triple and quadruple down on that and ram their agenda through. 